Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soulful Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack. Through this podcast, I'm on a mission to transform lives through primal adventure and to spread my mission of mentorship is conservation. This podcast is powered by Washington Backcountry, a resource for all hunters, both new and old. To find out more about Washington Backcountry, go to wabackcountry.com or search for Washington Backcountry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The Soulful Hunter podcast is also proudly presented by TNK Hunting Gear. If you haven't heard about TNK, then it's about time you do. I've been using TNK gear out in the field and on hunts and have fallen in love with their stuff. TNK is veteran owned and 100% made in America using only American made products. All their gear is covered under a lifetime warranty with no questions asked. If it breaks or fails, they will fix it or replace it for free. TNK is your resource for bino harnesses, bow slings, and a lot more amazing gear. For more information about TNK hunting gear, go to tnkhunting.com. Or search for them on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Freedom on and stay soulful. The Soulful Hunter podcast is also proudly presented by the Crazy Elk Company. Based out of the state of Washington with products made in America, they are providing solutions with gear to problems you didn't even know you had. Their tag wall is one of those solutions and I had the pleasure of using it on all of my hunts this last year. And it is now a mainstay in my kill kit. The tag wall is a water-resistant zippered pouch that comes with its own reusable zip ties to safely and securely store your notch tag for quick and easy access. For more information, go to crazyelkcompany.com and use the code SOULFUL with a capital S to save 20% at checkout. Be blessed, everyone, and as always, stay soulful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Soulful Hunter podcast. I have just a really cool episode for all of you who have been following the news about what's going on in the world of politics and hunting. This episode is a special episode that I wanted to get with Brian Lynn of the Sportsman's Alliance to talk about what is happening here in the state of Washington, what is happening in California, and all the different things that are happening in this world in regards to trying to strip and take away uh, hunting trapping and anything in revolves around wildlife so we got brian lynn of sportsman's alliance here we're going to dive into that brian thank you so much for joining us for an episode yeah thank you johnny great to be here again oh it's always a pleasure when you you come join the soulful hunter it's a good time for sure <laughs> all right so we here in the state of washington we have spring bear huntings under attack. It is uh, a lawsuit that was filed against, and I don't even know the specifics all the way, so I was hoping that you might be able to address some of this, but uh, there's a lawsuit attacking spring bear hunting and saying that what Department of Fish and Wildlife did was unethical for extending the season by 15 days because it was delayed by roughly a month. And so they still wanted to give the opportunity for hunters to get out and pursue their animals. And, uh, you know, it took me five years to draw spring bear and it, I was able to hunt it and harvest an animal last year, which was super awesome. And now I'm like, oh, I want to hunt spring bears every year. And in the state of Washington, you can hunt up to two bears a year, but yet for some reason they want to take away spring bear hunting. So Brian, jump on in, talk about what you know. Um, obviously, this has been spread around social media quite a bit, but for those of you who listen to this podcast who aren't on social media, you know, you, you this might be brand new news to you. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, the Washington stuff, which I don't know, this state is just goofy, you know. Um, we're we're uh, working on that or watching it. You know, we're working with some folks out here. Um to keep tabs on it. it it's kind of strange. It uh, started with nothing, really, just a, a commission meeting where they were talking about uh, reducing a couple of tags in units, uh, removing some of the acreage, uh, you know, extending really just small stuff. And some animal rights activists showed up and started voicing their displeasure with the season in general and thinking it should be canceled because it's cruel and whatever else. And the commission was like, okay, whatever, and went on about their business like they should. And now all of a sudden, two sisters have sued the department, threatening and saying that the department didn't give enough public notice of changes. I, I, I don't know how that's going to hold up in court very well when there is a 
a release, a news release. The department put out a news release on October 8th, I believe it was. It was picked up by the Spokesman Review and the Tacoma Tribune. And so, I mean, it's out there. Public notice was given. So it'll be an interesting argument to see. And if it has any justification and and is and stands at all, we'll just have to wait and see. It's a, These things are often hurry up and wait and kind of marathons with sprints in between. And the judicial system is a completely different one than the legislative. So, you know, we'll just have to wait till that unfolds. Yeah, it's really interesting to see, you know, especially in the state of Washington, because our wildlife, fish and wildlife department is controlled by voter initiative, it seems like, or can be affected tremendously through that. So for those listeners who are like, okay, I need to do something about this. And by the way, I don't typically say you should. However, if you want hunting to last, you need to take action against these um, lawsuits or different things that are happening to try to rip away and strip away our hunting rights, which is another topic that someday, you know, the state of Washington needs to put into their uh, their bill of rights that hunting is uh, inalienable, right? Hunting, fishing, trapping to be able to produce your own food and procure your own meat and all that. So another topic, however, this really lends into what can people in the state of Washington do to fight and get representation at the governmental level they need to reach out to their local legislators or well when it when it comes to legislation yes you know when there's a bill introduced uh last year the big one that we were working on was the uh the animal cruelty bill they were trying to redefine animal cruelty in washington state and the pain and suffering they were trying to define it as dogs and humans equating pain the exact same, which opens up a can of worms when it comes to training, when it comes to sending your dog into a cold river, you know, there's all sorts of possibilities that that could be exploited from. So when things like that come up, yeah, you need to, we need people hammering, calling their senators or representatives, just raising the hell basically. The lawsuits, there's nothing to do. It, it plays out in the court. It's based on, you know, statutes that are present. It's based on uh, requirements. It's a judicial hearing. So the legislative and the in the court branches are completely separate. That's part of the checks and balances of our U.S. system. So that, uh, you know, is, is something that just has to unfold most of the time. Uh, but when it comes to, yeah, in, uh, bills or ballot initiatives, even, you know, making noise and getting the point out there in the media and with the important players is is the big part of it. So that's really good. And that segues really well into what's happening and what happened in California. Obviously, we are recording. It is Wednesday, February 3rd. And I believe what just this last Monday on the 1st, um, Representative Weiner, I think his last name is pronounced. Uh, it rescinded his bill to ban bear hunting in the state of California. And that a lot had to do with what I, at least what I've seen and, and read that because there was such an overwhelming majority of resistance and saying, Hey, we are not okay with this, that he took it away, but it doesn't mean that idea is not floating around in the back of his head. And he's testing the waters for other States as well. And, and putting stuff out there. So that was, was, I think that was a house bill. Uh, if, Senate. If that was a Senate, Senate bill. Okay, so here it is. A guy from California presents in the Senate to ban black bear hunting. Obviously, California on their state flag, they have the golden bear, and they have already banned cougar hunting. They've banned bobcat hunting. Is it is it bobcat hunting or is it just bobcat trapping? Everything hunting, trapping, anything to do with killing a bobcat. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. And so now the next step is bears. And then it's just a waterfall effect, snowball, and, and you go. So can you speak a little bit about what happened in California and then what Sportsman's Alliance did to take a stand and, and step up? Yeah. As you mentioned, you know, this shouldn't really come as a surprise. I mean, we all got mad at it, which was awesome. But this is just furthering that traje trajectory that California has been on for the last 30 or more years. 1990, they banned all mountain lion hunting, made it a protected species, you know, yet the state still kills them when there's conflict and is forced to do a necropsy on each one. So not only are they missing out on tag money and revenue, they're putting money out from the general fish and game fund to do necropsies on them. 
They've banned uh, bobcat hunting, as you said, you know, which started a couple years ago. And it, it, the commission had three different, uh, you know, uh, choices they could have made. And it started around a national monument, Joshua Tree, trapping, you know, and that was the issue. Let's stop trapping a Joshua Tree. And then all of a sudden it went from that to all hunting and trapping of bobcats statewide is stopped. And then uh, we've had hounds taken away there bait you know so this is just a further trajectory and now uh senator uh wiener minor um <laughs> yeah i don't know how do you pronounce <laughs> I, I have no clue i don't you mean know? you know i'm not trying to be mean but if his name his last name is actually pronounced wiener then it's like oh dude you're living up to your name on this one because you are totally yeah. going against the grain of what the well no, yeah yes and no but i mean you know appropriately so he's from his, his district is San Francisco. Ah. And so his constituents don't care. I'm sure his constituents probably back it, you yeah. know, but that's a small area when you're talking the entire state. And, you know, he pulled it. He didn't pull it under, under you know, it, he, they didn't admit anything. They had no comment. Uh, they said, you know, in this time of crisis with COVID, we should probably focus on other things. And that was his saving face to get out of it. Um, but undoubtedly, the backlash from the sporting community and media outlets played a role in it. Um, you know, there he, he has zero science. He he was he's on record saying that you know our our dwindling bear population that's facing climate change and forest fires and now being hunted to the brink of extinction by the cruel inhumane hunters, you know, just isn't right. We need to stop this. The facts of the matter are that, you know, since the 80s, when there was 10 to 15,000 bears, now there's conservatively estimated 30 to 40,000 bears. Since they took hound hunting away, they've never reached the quota, you know, for the bears for the for the state. Last year, uh, you know, the quota is stuck at 1,700 bears and they took 919. So, you know, it's it's not, you know, hunting's taking less than 2% of these bears out, which is completely sustainable and growing, you know, um, actually the state wanted to increase the quota up to 2000, but that's not going to happen in California. So they've been stuck at that. So there, there was nothing legitimate about his claim about the bear population, about bears, about hunting being the problem or anything, you know, there isn't even a problem. This is a solution in, in search of a problem. Um, but they pulled it. So that's good. You know, and, and if we can get a Senator from California, from San Francisco, California, to pull a piece of legislation like this in the face of backlash and potential, uh, you know, media fallout, then that's just incredible. I mean, that probably, I, I was surprised actually. Yeah. You know, to see that happen. That was so a, that just shows our unified voice when all these different groups and people and everybody else come to this. It, uh, you know, it can be done. Yeah. And just to speak more to this and for all you, all you listeners who don't understand, like, well, if you lose something, you can get it back. Once you lose something and funding comes from different locations or funding goes to different locations or energy gets put into other things, you never get things back. I used to teach uh, I used to teach up in a smaller town here in the state of Washington, and our numbers, our student numbers were dropping to the point where we weren't really having the numbers to field a middle school football team. And even though there was a, a middle school league and all this, and so what ha ended up happening is the district cut the middle school football team. Have they gotten it back? No. Was that 15 years ago? Yes. And it just kind of goes to show it doesn't matter whether it's education, it's business, it's hunting, it's whatever. The minute that you remove something is the minute that to get that back into place is going to take way more energy and effort and become much more difficult to to establish once it's been removed. So this is huge. And, you know, I talk often, um, or at least, excuse me, I don't want to misspeak. I talk every now and then with Clay Newcomb of Bear Hunting Magazine, and he's been a big proponent. Obviously, he he runs Bear Hunting Magazine, so his, sta his sta um, stance with Guard the Gate 
we have to guard the gate, and it's not just bears. You as hunters need to know how to vocalize and verbally speak the advocacy points for hunting, fishing, and trapping to make sure it lasts for generations to come, period. Yeah, You got to be able to explain to somebody <clears throat> why hunting is one of, or if not the most important thing for you to do in your life for health, happiness, you know, right? The, the Declaration of Independence is the pursuit of life, liberty, or excuse me, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And hunting provides life by taking a life, the circle of it, right? Um, liberty, it, weapons, all that stuff, the right to be able to be free and stand alone. And then the pursuit of happiness, because like Big Al Moore said on, I think, episode 70 of the Soulful Hunter podcast, he goes, hunting coyotes is fun, period. And you know, yeah. people are like, why, yeah. do you, why do you do it? Why do you do it? And he's like, well, one of the reasons why I do it is because it's just fun. And yeah. whether or not that's a good enough answer for someone who is anti-hunting or on the fence about it, you include that along with all the other list of reasons, and it really makes a difference. We're not in the... We don't need to change people's opinions because you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But what you can do is provide valid evidence that is showing a positive reaction or positive um, beneficiary of the situation. You know, hunting transformed my life. It gave me hope for the first time. There was a lot of things that I was struggling with. And when I found hunting, it, it transformed my life. That to the point where I'm starting the Soulful Hunter podcast and doing all these different things solely because of hunting. And, but what about killing, killing animals? Don't you, don't you think that's cruel? It's like, I, I eat. I eat, therefore I hunt. Therefore, it fulfills me in multiple ways, not just through my gut, but through my soul, through my mind, through my physical activity. And it's important. So, Brian, I don't want to just keep rambling on because I brought you on as a guest for you to make sure you're speaking, but I just want people to hear, like, hunting, besides God, my wife, and my children, hunting is up there. It's top three because yeah. that is how much of an impact it's made on my life. And, and, I, and just, I, to, just to step back on what you were saying about once you lose something, it's very, very difficult to get it back. And you know, we're facing this in Washington here is the other side of that is even if you get a bill put forward or somehow collect enough signatures for a ballot initiative to, you know, reinstate a season as hunters, we face an uphill battle of messaging. What's the message? I mean, it's easy for the other side to say, we're going to save bears by stopping hunting. These guys kill these things. That makes sense to most people. It's reasonable. When, what's our message going to be? We want to kill more? Like, it's not a good PR message. So we have to guard the gate, as Clay says, that you can't let them take it to begin with because getting it back is almost impossible. And even if there is a movement for it, it's not a good PR media message, and it's one that the other side can use to fight any attempt to do that. Right. It's why I'm such a huge proponent of the Second Amendment. Once they take the weapons away, what do you have? You know, yeah. because the minute that you say, well, you still have your voice, well, censorship. I've had two Twitter accounts taken down this year already. I've had my personal Twitter accounts censored by big tech. Well, I didn't do anything wrong. I was retweeting. I liked stuff. Every now and then I'd tweet at our governor or just do different things, and it's gone. I'm, that's not okay. I'm not okay with that. <laughs> I'm not okay with someone else telling me how I can and cannot live my life. I understand if it infringes upon the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness of others. But at the end of the day, I'm also providing life for my family and doing it in a respectful manner. So I think it's, yeah, PR, hunting. Everybody listening to this podcast, learn how to speak for hunting. Like, do it. Because if you do not... You know, inaction is is the same thing as no action, right? Yeah. Is I think it was Fred Bear that said, "If you're not fighting for hunting, you're again you're fighting against it." Yes, yes, and I actually there is a uh, 
first they came. I got to Google this real quick because this is a quote that I use a lot. And he, even though I use it a lot, I don't have it memorized. But this is a quote from Martin Niemöller. Niemöller? I don't, it was during World War II. And this is a quote that is famous, that he's famous for. It says, first they came for the socialists, but I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I'm not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there is no one left to speak. This is 100% applicable to hunting. Oh, without a doubt. oh, well, they, they're only coming for the trappers. That's not me. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, they're only coming for the predator hunters. Oh, that's not me. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, they're, oh, wait a minute. Now there's no one left to speak. We are either all in this together or like, like our famous historian and presidents have said in the past, un- united we stand and divided we fall. Yeah, and, and that's that's it's completely applicable to hunting. You know, it's uh, trappers are on the front line, houndsmen are on the front line, bait, the predator guys, they're all right there. They're the first ones. They're the low hanging fruit, the easy targets. I mean, there's a bill in New Mexico right now to ban trapping on public lands. You know, there's uh, the California issue, uh, beavers in in Oregon. You know, they this is kind of how they work. They try to go through uh, the rules and committees and change the rules for things at that level. When the commission usually shuts them down, then they go the legislative route, which is where they're at in Oregon. Last year, they tried a citizen's petition to uh, to the commission, and they tried twice and two different arguments, both of which were shot down by science. And now they've gone to a legislator in rural California down there by Medford, which is right on the uh, California border, and she's introduced a, a ban uh, on beaver trapping in the beaver state. <laughs> and, you know, that's part of it. You know, this, this whole uh, cute little critter, our mascot type deal, uh, you know, so hopefully we can get that shut down. And when that doesn't work, then they usually go to the courts. So, you know, every, they follow a game plan, a blueprint, you know, and it's these trapping predators, hounding things that don't look or sound palatable or to some, you know, they don't think using a hound for big game is fair chase, you know, they, and they like to say that the technology of a, a Garmin alpha on your dog somehow allows them unfair advantage finding and treeing big game, which is just like mind boggling. But to the average person, they hear that and like, Oh yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> they don't even understand what's going on. Um, or how, so, how about the fairness of losing your dog because you can't track him? Yeah. You, you know, know, like you care it, about your animal's life to the point where you want to be able to identify where your, your dog's at. Yeah, you're going to spend 600 bucks on the collar for, so you can find your dog faster. You can get to the tree faster, which undermines a complete argument that they have that we spend too much time and the poor critters up there stressed and scared and everything else when usually they're asleep. Um, but you know, it, it just, but it sounds reasonable to the general public, you know, and that's where the battle is going to take place is the general public and who can, you know, get a hold of the legislators ears enough and make a difference, move that needle. And we need to be able to do that to protect it. But as you were saying with the quote, it starts with trapping. It starts with predators. It starts with houndsmen. When they take those away, they're coming for the other things. This bear is a perfect example. They got the the other critters, they got trapping, they got hounding. Now they're going after the big predator, you know, of bear hunting carte blanche. So, you know, that's exactly what they're going to do. Species by species, state by state, starting with California, method by method. Wayne Pacelli said it in 1990. That's the game plan and that's what they're doing. Yeah, and it's very important that we as hunters trappers fishermen outdoorsmen stand and fight because just like with supreme court cases when there's a precedent set that is just the automatic fallback oh the precedent has been set okay well this is how it's done now and so we need to make sure that the precedent is not set that black bear hunting is banned 
and, and that and that precedent can be set in the courts legally, and it can be set in the court of public opinion. And that's what they love to do. They love to get a state on here and ban something, and then they take it to a neighboring state and basically use peer pressure. Yeah. And, you know, the court of public opinion. Well, California did it. Idaho should do it too. Washington did it. So and Washington, Oregon, and California did it. So Idaho and Utah should do it. You know, the, all these neighboring states don't do it. And that's the sound bite get, that you'll see in the media. Man. And that, that's what the average person is reading. It's so wild. Yesterday, I randomly went to a shooting pit to sight in a, a new rifle scope. I had my young boy. It was just him and I. There was no one else at the shooting pit. And as I'm walking back to my truck, uh, there's another guy there. And I start chatting with him. And it turns out that he used to work for the Department of Fish and Wildlife or whatever they call it, the state agency in California, as a predator management worker, meaning he got paid to hunt predators and, nice. and manage them. And I was like, hey, did you hear about what's happening in California with bear hunting? He's like... No, I, I didn't, because obviously he's living here in the state of Washington and whatever. And and I was like, yeah, they're trying to ban it completely. He goes, really? Looked at me like this, this shocked face. He's like, that's ridiculous. There's so many bears in Northern California specifically. And I was like, there you go, out of the mouth. And then I got a random text message uh, from someone yesterday saying, I'm reading conflicting reports that a lot of the humane societies are reporting that, um, you know, bear hunting should be banned because, you know, bears are limited and there's a 1600 bear quota. But then I'm reading conflicting reports from hunting resources that say they haven't even reached the quota in years. What's the truth? And this is from somebody who's legitimately wants to know and wants to understand. And I said, you, you get, it's a tough one. You have to, I guess, I don't know, Brian, step in here for me. Do you lead with what you feel is like your gut instinct? Do you, where do you go for true, specific, fact-informed data? Because this well, one... Yeah, if, they, if their source material is a humane society of the United States, they're never going to get fact, truthful information. You know, they're an advocacy organization, so they're not going to give them that. They're trying to take this away. I mean, if you want, you know, if I had a friend that called me and said that, I'd just explain it point blank. Like, yeah, there's this many bears. We can, hunters are allowed to take up to 1,700, but they haven't reached that since they took hounding away. 900 is about where it sits. So they're not even killing the number that they have. It, it, this is where it, it's hard for the average person to understand is, there's the overall population, you know, and the, the other thing they like to do is say, well, here's the population. And then they'll say, but 27,000 tags are given out, you know, and they equate tags with success. And it's like, OK, well, you can give out a million tags. It doesn't, you know, I buy it doesn't mean one that they're selling them. Two, that anybody's going and three, that they're successful. I buy a cougar so tag. You can give every... a million and have one filled. Yes. You know? Yes. So I... it's it's. It's this blurry information, and then you throw in there, you know, quota systems, and then you throw in, you know, success rates, and then you throw in mortality rates, and then you start getting into the science, and pretty soon people are like, uh, I don't know, screw it. I want to make sure, we, we should be sure that we're not killing the bears, so I'm going to vote for it. Mm. Just because they're ignorant, and they don't know, and it's too confusing to figure it out, and it's not important enough to spend too much time on it. Yeah. it's To their life. It's yeah, not important. There's not enough time to do the research for all the different issues. And so they'll just more or less be like, well, this seems to be the majority. Or, and I say, or, seems or, or with on quotations. The side of caution. Right. They, they want to err on the side of caution. And, you know, which yeah, I don't blame them for. You know, it's like, okay, you know, if I don't know something, you know, I, I want to make sure that we aren't going to abuse this. But when it comes to wildlife management, it's not that easy and right. it's hard. Right. 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 I totally agree. You know, just to, what I was going to say right there is I buy a cougar tag every year. Do I go cougar hunting? No, I don't. Do I want to? Yes. Do I have it in case I see a cougar? Yes. But I'm not yeah. out there specifically pursuing cougars day in and day out. And so when you were talking about number of tags, it's like, yeah, dude, 
there's a lot of people that buy tags but then never hunt. I know people that buy deer tags and never hunt. You know, it's yeah. like. So this is where we're left. This is where le- we're left. But one thing I do want to share with all the listeners is I want people to understand the importance of Sportsman's Alliance. And I want them, I, I'm not going to say should, I don't like shooting on people, but I do believe in getting involved. And if you go to uh, wabackcountry.com or you go to soulfulhunter.com, you can go to our Get Involved tab. And right there is a link to Sportsman's Alliance that you awesome. can you can go and you can become a member and and all that. and. Dude, it makes a difference. It it really does, and I believe in it. So, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's huge, you know, and and it's just crazy right now. The bills that are coming down, you know, both good and bad. I mean, the bad outweigh the good, but I mean, there's good ones out there. Arizona designating firearms as uh, essential businesses, so they can't be shut down under emergency orders like we were here in Washington. You know, um, Maryland expanding their their hunting Sunday hunting, which is hard for us in the West to understand, but there's places back East that you can't hunt on Sundays and we're working to open those up because the average Joe hunts on Saturday and Sunday. Um, so, you know, those are the good things that are out there that we need to voice opinions and push also, you know, but California, Oregon, New Mexico, there's all sorts of stuff coming down the pike and every day there's more being introduced and moving to different committees. And that's what we do. We work, you know, we're within those committees. We try to assemble alliances as part of our names implies. We work in alliances with state groups and other federal groups to protect this stuff. The more people we have, the more members we have, the more money we have, you know, for lawsuits, for lobbying, for working on this stuff. So, you know, yeah, join us, join one of our uh, partners. Just get involved, as he said. I love it. And so, listeners, just so you know, I'm on sportsmansalliance.org's website right now. And if you go to the Government Affairs tab at the top, it opens up a little thing that says Legislative Action Center. And if you click on that, that'll take you to a web page. And it says there's no action alerts currently at this time. However, you can find your elected officials. And so if you type in uh, browse by state or last name, zip code, all that, hit go, you can get the information for your local representatives and legislators. And it doesn't require you to wait for something to happen for you to send a message saying, hey, I care about hunting and fishing and trapping rights. Don't trample on these. I'm your constituent. Here you go. And keep putting good stuff in the ears of these legislators, not, hey, don't take us away. You know, a lot of the times, they don't ever hear from the hunting and fishing and trapping organizations and groups until there's something wrong. So it's okay to advocate and be on the forefront um, of that. Just like being a parent, if I set the expectation for my child beforehand, then when the situation arises, it's much smoother and there's a lot more understanding around it. So really highly recommend yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you can, if you can develop a rapport outside of the issues with one of your local state legislators or reps, that's great. I mean, Buddy in uh, Vancouver there who runs uh, DU Hound Supply, you know, he made it a point to get to know them. And now we have had all this hound talk and the lion talk and part of the dog training stuff last year. And Buddy was uh, part of it. And he was able to reach out directly to his senators and get get put into committees and working groups. And, you know, it, it's just like a friendship. So if you can make friends, even if you don't agree with everything they say, at least have a professional, you know, rapport with them. When you're, when our issues come up, it helps. It gets your voice heard, and you can get a phone call in or an email and get a response, and not just the canned response. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, in wrapping this podcast up, I just want all you listeners to know that you can follow along on Sportsman's Alliance uh, on social media. So they are on Instagram. I know that for a fact. They're on Facebook. Brian, are you guys on Twitter as well, or any other platforms? Yep, we're on Twitter. Uh, I don't use it a whole lot. I've never understood Twitter, <laughs> if I'm just being honest. So the stuff that goes on Instagram, I just slide it over and have it go on Twitter. I'll, re- I'll repost uh, things that were tagged in or that people you know mention about us. But uh, Instagram, and especially Facebook, are the much more active platforms. Yep, and so if you are on those social platforms, make sure to go follow Sportsman's Alliance so that you can stay up to date on what's happening and 
looking at you can get involved. Knowledge is power, and the more knowledge we have, the better and more informed decisions we can make as humans. And it's all about making this world a better place. And that's what mentorship as conservation is. It's just loving people and loving others and loving what we do. So, Brian, thank you so much for joining us for this episode, for this special edition of The Soulful Hunter about hunting rights and all that. So really look forward to seeing what's going to be happening and all the great things that is going to be happening for hunting, fishing, and, and trapping rights in America. Be blessed, everyone. Go check out Sportsman's Alliance. Go uh, follow them on social media. Get involved. Contact your legislators. And as always, everybody, stay soulful. If you enjoyed today's podcast, I'd love it if you could go ahead and give this a rating as well as subscribe. Also, you can check us out on Instagram under the Soulful Hunter podcast. Make sure to tag us in pictures and posts and use the hashtag Soulful Hunter. To find out more about the Soulful Hunter podcast, go to soulfulhunter.com and be sure to follow the podcast as we are going to be bringing you a lot of great information, insight, and changing lives through Primal Adventure. I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Stay tuned and stay soulful. Soulful.